Hi, this is R. Renee with thetithinghoax.com. Let's talk about what the church doesn't want you to talk about today on the Tithing Hoax podcast. Stay tuned for this week's message. Hi there, this is R. Renee with thetithinghoax.com. Thank you for joining me for this week's episode of the Tithing Hoax podcast. This is where we talk about what the church doesn't want you to talk about. And today's topic is, is God's law unfair? One of our visitors seems to think that I took a position or viewpoint that God's law is unfair because I made the statement that um and it's a statement that is in the free tithe study guide and it's one of the lessons in this in the study guide that all of ancient israel did not tithe and i'm gonna tell you something after listening listening to so many preachers promote tithing and how they stress that you know everyone in the church needs to tithe everybody in the church needs to pay tithes and I, for a long time, was under the impression that even though these pro-tithing preachers base their teachings on the Bible, even though their, their teachings are incorrect, but nevertheless, it gave me the impression that everybody in ancient Israel paid tithes, Right? Because if preachers are telling everybody in the church they must pay tithes, then everybody in ancient Israel must have paid tithes. And it was only when I did additional research did I discover that everyone in Israel did not pay tithes. Only a select group of people um, were required by God, by the Mosaic law to pay tithes. And so, you know, and this is what, and this is the, uh, this is a reference to the comment I made in, that I made in the free tithe study guide. And, and this is what our, the, our, our visitor, uh, is, is, this is his response to what I wrote. And he says, you know, your viewpoint means that the law of God was unfair. Some tithed in ancient Israel, Others didn't because of their profession. And he says, another thing in the Bible is that it never said the engravers and the weavers, etc., etc., didn't farm or raise cattle. And engravers and weavers are just two of the pro uh, professional trades that existed among, among the ancient Israelites. So, the big question is this. Let me pull this up right quick. Pull my, there we go. Big question, why didn't God require everyone to tithe? And isn't that unfair? Well, first of all, we have to look at, look at things like, like this. We may not always understand why God required certain things um, in the Bible. Because in other words, there are some things we'll see in the Bible that God did or required at that particular time that based on our modern day understanding doesn't make sense to us. So from our, our mindset or my, our mentality, we'll say, wow, that was unfair. But if you take, you know, for instance, that when you're dealing with the tithe, it, it goes back to the land inheritance where you have 12 tribes of Israel and 11 tribes received land inheritance and the tribe of Levi was the only tribe that didn't receive a land inheritance. So you can look at that and say, oh my goodness, you know, you can have a Shanae mo moment. Oh my goodness, that, that wasn't fair. How is it, you know, everyone gets land except the tribe of Levi. God, isn't that fair? But it's not me saying that God, that is unfair. That's just the way God had it set up. You know, the, God, God wanted the Levites to depend on him and as their inheritance. So 
So that's the way God wanted it. So, you know, it's not me saying God is unfair. And, and when I discovered through my research that all of ancient Israel didn't pay tithes, that, um, that only certain groups pay tithes, that's not me saying God is unfair or the law is unfair. That's just the way it was set up. So now, so let's look at, at, you know, who paid tithes. And I'm going to quote from um, Dr. Russell Kelly, who's a, a well-renowned theologian who's done extensive research on the topic of tithing and has done excellent work. He says here, the Bible clearly teaches that only Israelite landowners and Israelite herdsmen inside Israel, inside Israel, inside the land of Israel, were required to tithe their increase. Only those Israelites who earned a livelihood from farming and herding inside Israel were required to tithe under the Mosaic law. Their increase came from God's hand. And I'm going to come back to that because that is very, 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 very important. Their increase came from God's hand. But so the bottom line is there were only two groups of people who were who were required under the Mosaic law as required by God to pay tithes. And that was the ancient uh the Israel Israelite landowner owners and the Israelite herdsmen inside Israel. So who didn't pay tithes? Who what are some examples of the people who didn't pay? For example, the poor didn't pay tithes. I cover that in the free tithe study guide, now, which you can download um, from our website. If, at, at the time of this recording, it's still up on the website, our website, but if not, you can get it from the Kindle store and download it for free. So I cover that. The poor didn't pay. And what's so tripped out is that you have all these prosperity gospel preachers going in, who have gone into these poor countries throughout Africa in, in Asia and other countries and continents teaching this bogus prosperity gospel and they have the poorest of the poor paying these tithes to them that's bogus the poor didn't pay tithes they were exempt Jesus is an example of somebody who would not who did not pay tithes and no it's not because he's the son of God no it's because he was a carpenter by profession as a carpenter he would not have been required to pay tithes. Peter is another example of somebody who would not have paid tithes. Peter was a fisherman. Now, some may think, well, fish comes from the land, sort of, sort of, sort of, sort of, kind of like. It's the sea, but but that that comes from still the God's land. It comes from the earth, right? Right? So wouldn't he have tithed his fish? No. Because once again, the tithe was either livestock and fish don't fall under the category of livestock. They're not livestock. And the tithe was also uh, agricultural produce. Fish are not agricultural produce. They, you know, fish come from the sea. So Peter would not have tithed uh, from his fish. Fish weren't, weren't, a t weren't a tithable item. So Peter was exempt from paying tithes. Another example is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, he was a tent maker by trade. He too would not be required to pay tithes. He was exempt, right? And another whole group of people who would not have tithed <laughs> were the Gentiles, meaning non-Jews, uh, like Christians, didn't tithe. Um, according to the Jews, Gentiles were unclean. They didn't so. Like Jews are like, we don't want your tithe, you filthy people. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> so anyway, like once again, so Gentiles were another group of people who would not have tithe and didn't pay, pay tithes. So even once they, even the Gentiles who came into Christianity, nope, no tithes, no thank you. We don't accept tithes from Gentiles. They just didn't. So, and so here is a list of some other trades and professions. Because like I say, I, 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 I didn't know this because about ancient Israel, because I, I always came away with the impression that ancient Israel was just full of, <laughs> you know, farmers, <laughs> you know, that it was, it was strictly an agricultural based economy. And the fact is, it was not. There were people who had 
other jobs, other professions, and they earned wages. They earned actual money. Just like when we go to our jobs and we get paid a salary, or, you know, and get paid wages. Same thing. So they're, they're in ancient Israel. They had designers. They had embroiderers. They had gem cutters. They had uh, metal f- uh, forgers. They had weavers. They had manservants, maidservants, hired workers, etc. And these people received wages. Now, the skilled workers, as I just said, they earned income from their own hands. And this is very key. They earned it from their own hands. So their wages were not holy to God and was not tithable. And, and listen to what Dr. Russell Kelly says here. He says, those who, whose increase came from their own crafts and skills were not required to tithe products and money. And once again, you know, we talk about how the tithe was was not money and how to how God considered the tithe um, holy. What was holy? It was so holy. What made the tithe holy? Because it was God who was responsible for the increase. It's not like today where they try to try to. Uh, get over on people with this whole monetary tie, the paying your, from your income, pay from your gross, pay from your net. It's a bunch of nonsense because when you, when you, the money that you make, you're trading your time for your salary. That is increased by your own hands. That's something that, that you're doing. You know, I know we give honor and praises to God for all of our blessings, but from a biblical standpoint, you have to look at it f- from how God viewed money and why God didn't want money because God did not view it as holy. Your income is not holy to God. Your salary, your paycheck is not holy unto God. It would not have been considered back then nor now because that is money you are earning based on the work that you're doing. Unlike the farmers, for example, says, yes, the farmers go and they plant their seed and they till the land. But one thing that farmers didn't have any control over, farmers didn't have any control over the weather. They didn't have control over the rain. They didn't have control over the sun. These are uh, elements of nature that are needed in order to um, produce a harvest. So when they get their harvest, they get the increase. It's like, yes. Thank you, God. This is holy because only God could do that. That's something man could not do because man did not have that control over the elements. You see what I'm saying? So that's what made the tithe holy. Tithe meaning the agricultural produce as well as the livestock. Now, were there any exceptions to where uh, people with professions and trades who earn wages did pay tithes? Well, let's, let's look at this. Number one, every Israelite obviously did not pay tithes, but they did give free will offerings, which is not the same as a tithe. So they can give free will offerings from their income, from their wages. That was acceptable, only as a free will offering. So whatever they paid from their tithe, excuse me, from their wages and their income, that fell under the category of free will offerings. It was never considered a tithe, okay? And... As a side note now, if there was a skilled laborer who, say, raised crops or cattle on the side, this person could have paid tithes from their crops and from their cattle. Now, if you take, for example, like the cattle, according to the Mosaic Law, God required like the tenth animal. Um, and that tenth, like say you had ten cows, the tenth cow would go to God. Now, say if someone is an engraver and he has two cows, that engraver would not tithe one of the cows. He only had two. So in order for his, even his, for, uh, for someone who had cattle on the side, he would have to have at least 10 of whatever animal, at least 10 goats, or at least 10 cows and tithe the 10th. But if you had two, if you had nine, you wouldn't tithe off tithe off that off that um, off that cattle. Um, so even if he had raised crops on the side, had a little vegetable garden, you know they could tithe from that, for instance. But other than that, but as a general rule, rule of thumb, if a skilled laborer, if that's all they were was a skilled laborer and they did not raise crops and did not have at least ten or more cattle on the side that they that they owned, no, they did not tithe. So. 
recap, the only people who tithe were landowners and herdsmen. And the tithe had to come from inside the land of Israel. And Israelites who held occupations did not tithe unless they had they raised uh, crops and had at least um, ten um, tithable um, livestock, like at least ten cows or something like that. And they would tithe the tenth cow. And Israelites who were not required to tithe did give free will offerings from their income and from their wages. And that's something that is that is carried through into the New Covenant. And you see that in the New Covenant where it does, and Paul encourages throughout the Scripture, you know, encourages the saints to give free will offerings. And that's what the church of today, you know, should encourage. Free will offerings, not tithing. But I, as I expound on this in the Free Tithe Study Guide, which you can download. And also don't forget to go over to Amazon the Kindle uh, store on Amazon and download the copy of the tithing hoax, which you can, you can get for $2 and 99 cents. You can't beat that. So go ahead and, and get a copy of that. And please, please, please leave a review. Let us know what you think of the tithing hoax book. And until next time, this is R. Renee. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. And until next time, peace and blessings. R. Renee here. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Tithing Hoax podcast. For more information about the Tithing Hoax, visit thetithinghoax.com, download your free tithe study guide, or drop us an email at info at Until next time, peace and blessings.